I will bring to you another yet interesting, impactful session. We are here celebrating the Women's Week, the Women's Day Special Week. And uh, for today, we have topic Women Health and Education Webinar. So uh, get going with it. Uh, uh, let me tell you that we are live on C8 TV. Okay, so the Life Foundation and C8 TV is founded by Professor Dr. V.G. Carlin. So may I now hand over to uh, Dr. Carlin for her welcome note, please. Over to you, Dr. Carlin. Yeah, namaste, good evening, good morning. Uh, greetings to all the excellences, eminent speakers who gathered here. Uh, it's an amazing time for us to address the every issue of women and our motto is to empower women. Our topic is today, health and education, especially of women. As we are celebrating, the Life Foundation is celebrating the Women's Week. I'm Dr. Carlin, Chairman of the Life Foundation. I invite you warmly. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity to invite you. As women, health and education, I feel it is, it is correlated. If girl and women are well qualified or not even qualified, if they have a little secondary education, if they pass primary and move on to secondary education, there will be drastic changes in their life. Women who are little bit educated, I'm not speaking about well qualified women or girls, a little bit education, if they understand the world, what is good and what is bad, if they discriminate and take the steps to the positivity and make their life more bright. So that is, I feel that is sufficient at least for the girls who have secondary education. Because girls who are educated and little education also, the research has shown that the death rates of infants has reduced and they haven't fallen prey to sexual diseases and also they're able to protect themselves from the sexual abuse and they can fight for their right and they can postpone their marriage and have a better life. So in this way, the mortality rate of the girl children has been decreased if they have little education, even secondary education. The girls and women who have achieved their targets and the goals with higher qualifications, they are living in a more better way. So today we are going to address the uh, problems of uh, women and girl children. But as we are concentrating much on the empowerment of girl and women based on their education, how education is supporting girl and women in to have a better life. I invite all the eminent speakers to address the issues and also empower girl and women to support through this platform. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Carleen, uh, for opening this session. Now, may I now invite uh, our first speaker for this evening, Dr. Dragan Jovanov, and he is a scientist uh, uh, from Macedonia. Over to you. Thank Welcome, you. Dr. Dragan. Thank you. So, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Dragan Ivana from Macedonia, uh, Doctor of Phytomedicine and Agroecology. Uh, thank you for the invitation there, uh, Sirajo. Uh, thank you for the honor. And congratulations, Women's Day. I wish them to much love, health, and success. Uh, women's health is a state of emotional well-being of women, which is uh, uh, simultaneously determined by their uh, social and economic status as well as their bi biological characteristic. Uh, women uh, have the right to enjoy, enjoy 
the high the available standards of physical and mental health, enjoying this right is vital to their lives and World Bank uh, will bank um, as well as, the, as uh, to their uh, their ability to participate in all areas of public and private life. Women have uh, the right to personalize it, uh, health care, the lawyer uh, to their clinical characteristic and personal uh, preference and uh, priorities. Uh, this right is internationally connected throughout the Convention of uh, Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, the, the right of health uh, with uh, access to all health services, uh, access to uh, adequate free health service, the universal declaration of human right, uh, the Peking Declaration and uh, Council Resolution 1325 years, UN Security for Women, and it is uh, thank you and greatest, to, greatest from Macedonia. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dragan, for joining us uh, for this uh, impactful session here. Um, may I now invite our next speaker, Dr. Vasavi Acharya, a uh, Duprener, social activist, uh, mentor, and an author. Welcome, Dr. Acharya. It's the first time that uh, I'm sharing the screen with you. And uh, over to you, please. Thank you, Deepa. Thank you for the introduction. And I thank uh, Dr. Rajara for having me here today. And I also congratulate Dr. Carolyn for this wonderful platform, feeling honored to be a part of this. Uh, so today I will be talking about women in education and I'm looking at it from a different angle in the sense that uh, what is the leadership role of women in the education sector? Because I have been working in the early childhood sector since last 22 years and uh, you know I've met a lot of uh, women who have been associated with this. So to start off, I would, you know, um, quote Nelson Mandela, who says education is the most powerful weapon that can change the world. Yes, education is indeed the most powerful weapon that can change the world. And when we look at it closely, we see that this weapon is primarily in the hands of women, be it the mother, the grandmother or the teacher. We all know that teaching force is largely composed of women, both nationally and internationally. But at the same time, we can see that there is a concerning unrepresentation of women in its leadership position. So if we look at the preschool sector, where I have been associated since last past 22 years, we see that most of the early years educators are women. They are in fact the bandwagon of the preschool education scenario. Yet if we try to figure out women who own a chain of preschools, we see that the number is few. This aspect of entrepreneurship is mainly male dominated. That is what I have experienced. Women are more pro in education delivery, say research and development, but many times they tend to take a backseat when it comes to uh, entrepreneurship or education leadership. Coming from the uh, uh, you know, primary, uh, pre-primary to the middle and the high school sector, it is seen that imbalance persists across the board from salary and benefits to recruitment and promotion. For example, 63% of teaching staff in secondary schools are female compared with only 38% as head teachers. So what is the barrier that leads to such roadblock? When we look at it closely and the gender and the leadership studies that have been happening all over, we see a number of obstacles for women seeking education leadership roles. Women in education, women educators face barriers that may not uh, be you know same worldwide, but there are some key factors that are the same uh, behind the disparity in education uh, sector. The primary being traditional and patriarchal culture and perceived male dominance of management. So we usually think that you know it's the male who can, um, after all, manage the entire uh, you know sector in a in a way. So maternity is uh, care is another one of the biases that has shown to have a significant impact on women's pay and progression. In many cases, we also see women do not have the go-getter attitude due to historical and social influences where, you know, generally girls are taught to be more docile, they are taught to be more, you know, um, uh, kind of never go and uh, get what they really want to uh, get, achieve. So women sometimes do not feel the urge to uh, lead due to a lack of support from, from peers and close ones. 
But we also see women in the education sector who are actually breaking the class ceiling. It's always easy to see the bleak side of things. But if we look at women in the domain of education who are leading from the front, we have quite a few role models to choose from. Many women in education leadership are actually breaking the glass ceiling, like I already said. Such women have been the path markers as they bring a host of other skills and attitudes to educational leadership. Women who are ahead of educational institutions enact meaningful, long-lasting change within school settings. Girls often find such women in their institution inspiring and follow them as role models, and boys learn to accept the status quo in the workplace. I have been heading a preschool chain by the name Tender Petals, which have been franchised in different parts of Northeast India and North India. So when I launched this preschool chain, definitely I faced a lot of challenges, uh, not only in terms of competition, but also because I was, uh, I'm not much of a uh, person who can manage finances and it's not my core strength. And uh, then we had to deal with a lot of marketing things and uh, really, you know, have had to be the jack of all trades. But then definitely this was a big, big um, learning path for me. So this journey has actually made me stand on my own and now run more than 25 centers all over Northeast India and North India. So, uh, in all these years, I've seen that a lot of women has joined hands with us to embark on their entrepreneurship journey with Tender Petals. And this I have seen have empowered the woman in a, in a way because, uh, uh, you know, um, those educators who were teachers with us are now actually uh, setting up their own preschools and they are running it very well and being financially independent. Also, during my association in the Indian, with the Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship, now I have mentored a lot of women who opened their own standalone schools and have been successful in their ventures and have become financially independent. Recently, I have come across many online educational startups by women in Northeast India, which are app-based learning modules and they are doing fantastic. So definitely there are women emerging as leaders in the education sector and the number is increasing by the day. And I'm sure this is only the start. With this, I would conclude my short presentation. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you once again for having me. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Acharya. We wish uh, Tender Petals uh, all the success and uh, um, great prosperity for you. Moving really, on, it's then. highly appreciable uh, to start so many education centers as education is only can bring a bright, enlightened woman and you a prosperous uh, life. So, and it's a prosperous life to the girl and woman. So, it is a great uh, deed that ma'am has done. Uh, she Thank has started so, so many education centers. Really, I, highly appreciable, ma'am. Uh, only we, uh, we all women who are well qualified and educated, we have to concentrate on girl children and their education. So in that way, we can empower them. So highly appreciable, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Acharya. Moving on next, uh, may I now invite uh, Ms. Kaushiki Songi. She is the principal of Holy Public School. Hello everyone, how are you? And I think uh, when we talk about this beautiful topic that is women, health and education, uh, as uh, already many have thrown a beautiful light about what deeds they are doing and what we should do to empower a woman. Uh, well, uh, about me, I'm working in a girls' school right now and the thought was to empower a girl child because when we empower a girl child, we are itself educating a nation and uh, by educating a nation, we can create a future where uh, women are, uh, you know, they are aware about their rights. They are aware about the facts that need to be uh, worked upon. And they are aware about the things that need to be taught to the boy child and the girl child from the very basic education system, where they can tell them that it's okay to cry for everyone. It's okay being a human right. You know, woman right is nothing, something not which is separated. Uh, because when we say we need women empowerment, we are actually uh, bifurcating the both uh, from the human rights. So we need to understand that this thing is itself uh, a part of human uh, basic rights. So that's why uh, we are educating girls about that by uh, creating a awareness about the life skills, soft skills, 
and other factors that need to be worked upon. Because sometimes it due to family condition or due to some other conditions, women are not able to have the uh, X factor uh, to prove themselves in the society to do something for their living. And by creating that life skill, they can have some vocational part to play in the society where they can prove themselves. And now that's why we are having a small scale industry and these kind of things to make them more empowered, to tell them that, okay, you can come outside from your four walls and do something for yourself, for the society itself. So I think that is women education, that is women health, uh, mental health we are talking about. Because when we talk about the health factor also, it is not limited to the access of having the, you know, the physical uh, healthy women we can see around. Because many of the women are wounded from itself inside. And there we need to play a role uh, as a woman, as a man itself, and understand that women need to have many other support systems, which we call by trying, you know, by providing them the access of doing something in the uh, nature of uh, proving themselves. Because the factor of proving themselves as a human is itself a big thing. I, I think you will agree with me on that, right? Because uh, everyone in the life, they want to prove themselves. And women due to responsibilities are not able to prove themselves at certain points. And women health plays an issue there because they are mentally sick inside that, okay, they are not able to do something in the life. So we need to tell them, okay, you can go. So that it's okay factor is a very much uh, 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 important part when we talk about women. And then only we can empower women about that. So uh, playing a role of a principal, playing a role of a mother, playing a role of a uh, you know, daughter, and also playing a role of a wife, I have seen that the men around me, when they are supporting me together, then I'm empowered. So it is the first thing that men need to understand that women health, women education started from them because they, you know, the nature have provided them extra responsibility by being more strong physically, mentally, emotionally, as compared to the sensitive part of a woman. And women are more, uh, you know, uh, humanly and motherly uh, uh, arranged by the God for creating new lives. So these two factors have been provided by the nature itself. So we should, uh, supporting the nature of uh, nature itself, we should uh, have that play, play area as a man, as a woman, to create the healthy environment for the women of the nature of the nation to you know create something uh, new and we are seeing that women are coming forward in the healthy way to prove uh, the education factor and uh, even i have seen that when the, there were cultural differences you know some parts some area they were not allowed women are not allowed to go outside at certain points but now that cultural differences are also seen that they are allowing their women to go outside to play a role and that is a big deal so we are seeing the changes and I think the changes start from the four wall itself and uh, supporting that I think it should be educated to the girl child, to the man, male child, to any gender itself that okay, it's okay for everyone to cry, it's okay, it's okay to have the emotional uh, you know, area of uh, gestures to share together so we can have that area of uh, exposure that yes, we are human and we need that uh, uh, support together. So uh, when we talk about women health, women education, uh, it's a big thing in a wider concept and it doesn't stop with one home or what. If we are, you know, if we are supporting 100 women and we are making a change, I think it will not end that. We together need to come and have that gesture of sharing the emotions and then only it can start. So that's from my side and thank you so much. Yeah, wonderful, ma'am. Um, Koshiki, ma'am, really, I like the two points which uh, uh, attracted me. One is, yes, women need to be empowered, girls need, need to be empowered, life skills and soft skills to be taught. So this has to be started from lower classes. Generally, we will be teaching life skills and uh, soft skills from graduation. But if we teach from lower classes, mean uh, from upper primary classes even, they will understand better and they can uh, lead their life uh, very comfortably with the eminent skills. They can face any kind of uh, troubles or hurdles and they can overcome comfortably. And also they can help other girl children to 
come out. So really, it is very important uh, to teach life skills and soft skills as many girls are lack, lacking uh, in these areas and they're facing a lot of problem. So exactly. they are unable to take up the opportunities uh, uh, which they are, uh, knock, the opportunities are knocking their door. But because of the lack of these skills, they're unable to take up the opportunities. I think so education is, system, right, because education system itself should support the talent because we have seen in the, you know, in Indian, Indian education system, we have seen the Gurukul part when we were yes. talk, talking, about, they, they, they focus upon the talent. They never focus yes. upon the hard skills. Now what we are doing, we are doing the intellectual part, but we are forgetting about the sensory development, the yes. you know, the interest part. So we should yes. have that awareness. And I think then only empowerment start. And yes. this is not about only women. This is about the human we are talking. So we yeah, should support true. that part. Right? Even as a faculty of engineering college, I will be taking up soft skills and life skills will be teaching. Then, uh, as you said, uh, even not only girls, boys are also lacking behind. They are uh, uh, not right. uh, good at these skills, and uh, they too, uh, they are also losing many opportunities. Exactly. So, as you said, this has to be taught uh, human, not uh, women or men. Right. This has to be taught equally to both, so that uh, boys are also taught life skills. They can uh, know what is life and uh, what are the skills and how they can protect girl children. That is also exactly. important. Exactly. So they understand well the importance exactly. of both the gender. The yes, because gender we have right. seen we have seen that the difference start from the very childhood only. Yes. When the boy is crying, we are like, oh, why you are crying? Like right. you can't yeah. be sensitive. You are strong, you know, you are a strong person. That's but true. if a girl is crying, we are like, okay, you are a sensitive person. Uh, you know, you can you can cry. Okay, it's uh, it's a part of the girl part to play. Yes. So we need yes. to understand it's okay to have the release of emotion. Uh, yes. at any part and then only we can have the mental health of a human together. Even uh, research has also shown in that uh, that girls express their emotions. Right. Uh, they come out from all uh, emotions so free. They will not be uh, hidden in their heart. They express it either right. to their close friends or to the family member who are very close to them. So they will not fall uh, sick regarding the heart-related diseases or psychological uh, issues. But uh, boys who, who, the parents who suppressed, that emotions has to be suppressed and kept in their heart, so they are falling prey to many diseases. So this we have to educate and such awareness is very much important. Boys also need to express their emotions. And the second thing, as uh, Koshika ma'am said, that men should understand and men need to understand uh, women. Uh, that is, uh, I feel that is very, very important. I would like to say my experience in this regard, uh, that my mom, uh, she has taken up the norms that girls should not step out of the house after six o'clock. So she kept me till graduation in that condition. But my dad, he taught me to break the glass ceiling and come out from all these kind of uh, uh, hindrances or social stigma that uh, are the norms of the family that you should not get uh, uh, taken to the heart. So he asked me to break the uh, this rule. And uh, he asked me to come out uh, breaking the glass ceiling. But unfortunately, I missed him at very young age. And, but he taught me only in third class, I missed him. But I have learned the uh, what uh, the life skills he taught me in that short duration of time in my childhood that has taken to my heart. As I don't want to break my mom, I accepted her rules, her norms, and uh, continued till graduation. And when I stepped into PG, I, when I was... Uh, totally independent, straight in the hostel, I started implementing and uh, implementing my life skills, soft skills and showing up my abilities, capabilities, talents. And I became uh, not as a normal girl. I used to participate in every activity and I'm known uh, in university and other areas, well known with Carolyn. So that I feel what my dad that taught in lower classes in my childhood days, I have implemented in my life. So if men understand the nature of the girl child and protect the child girl and also uh, inculcate uh, the daring uh, nature in their hearts that come out uh, this is not the style of living you have you shouldn't stay at the one color of the house or room you have to come out and lead the life very peacefully and uh, comfortably and also support other uh, women or girl children what are the lessons i learned in my lower classes or in my childhood that i'm implementing and I'm moving on. So I always appreciate men should understand 
girl and protect girl as well or women and they have to help them to come out breaking up the glass ceiling thank you very much thank you so much galin ma'am uh, uh, for uh, wonderful insights uh, can you adjust your camera please so that uh, uh, we can get uh, a fuller version of you please so thank you so much uh, moving on next uh, may i invite uh, miss neeta bhalla she is the vice president of your high school from lucknow uh, welcome uh, miss bhalla and uh, we look forward to hear it from you today namaskar uh, very good evening to everybody and a heartfelt gratitude to uh, making me participate in this wonderful session uh, from where to begin tulsi das said ढोर गवार शूद्र पशुनारी से सब ताड़न के अधिकारी और शल आई कोट वर्जीनिया वुल स्ट्रगलिंग टू अ रूम ऑफ वन जोन और शेक्सपियर सिस्टर वॉज ऑलवेज डिप्राइव ऑफ हर राइट ऑन अ लाइट अर नोट विद ड्यू रिस्पेक्ट टू मेन ऑन बोर्ड वाई डोंट वी एवर टॉक टू एम्पार मेन SDG 4 quality education aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all i underline the words for all when we talk about the overall literacy rate the male literacy rate is 75.3 and females is 53.7 showing a gap of 21.6 percentage points between the sexes at the national level they typically women typically have little autonomy to decide for themselves bearing the health hazards to give birth to a male child maybe multiple pregnancies and further nourish the progeny moreover the process of globalization liberalization economic reorganization as further added to the roles assigned to them and their bargaining power if you now check the matrimonial it adds that a woman should be in job a girl should be in job so that it enhances now we are asking about an atm machine as well the double burden that is carried by women explains a chronic stage of malnutrition overwork and fatigue added to the stresses and strains of modern life environmental degradation and increasing insecurity and violence when a woman is constantly su subjected to subjugation humiliation and violence in her own family or she is gang raped or tortured on a communal right it can't be healthy not only that are overwork with the living conditions low wages poor health system and other resources as well as the social exclusion determines our health and lead to inequalities in health estimates suggest that each year at least 1.5 million girls under 18 get married in india which makes the largest number of child brides in the world i do not expect much but believe me i just want to convey to the world please respect the individuality of a woman stop binding them in blues and pinks it's not necessary that a woman has to always go with pink and not with blue even now the career choices i are either made by the family or the society decide that a woman can be a good teacher maybe not a good chef so let us come out of that we had enough of that thank you so much thank you so much uh, ms bala and i really love the fact that you said now we want an atm machine too 
<laughs> it's oh, a fight. I, Just flip through the classified this Sunday. You will find. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, everybody, everybody, even the in-laws, uh, or uh, it's a, it's actually a choice nowadays that they want a uh, working. And the reason nowadays that they don't say that we want it for money. Nobody accepts that. They say that okay, fine. What will you do sitting at home? A working a woman actually gets uh, exposure. She gets a groom of her personality. In a way, they actually wrap it up that way 